Well, good morning, Valley Life family. Here we are again, another week, coming together to worship in different houses again, different places of abode, in your recliner, in your chair. Maybe you're standing, maybe you're jumping, maybe you're shouting, but whatever you're doing, we're glad that you came this morning. We come to worship the Lord, give Him praise, give Him glory, give Him honor. So we welcome you, and more importantly, we welcome the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, today, thank you for the opportunity that we have to gather together, to come together in your name, to come together to worship you. And truly, that is our desire this morning, to worship you with everything that we have. Lord, we just thank you, and we give you glory, and we give you honor. We welcome you into this place today. In your name we pray. Amen. Oh, 
Jesus bled and died for me And I see his wounds, his hands, his feet My Savior on that cursed
Good morning, everyone. Please join me in corporate prayer for our nation. Holy God, we come humbly before you, asking you to open the eyes of our hearts to see each other as you see us. Cause us to work together as one for the good of all. All races, all cultures, all people, disabled and not disabled, young and old. Open our eyes to see and protect the vulnerable. Cause us to be willing to care for each other, to be sure each, uh, each one has what they need to live life. Cause us to pray for our leaders that they will have wisdom beyond their understanding, to lead us in the way that is for everyone's good. Cause us to be one nation that can't be divided under the care and protection of God knowing that truly blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. In your powerful name, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Good morning. Would you please take your Bibles and would you please turn to the book of Acts and chapter 3. The book of Acts chapter 3. I read a story this week about a uh, person that was a manager of a soap manufacturing plant and he was walking down the street with a friend and the, the manager of this plant was not a believer but his friend was and as they were walking down the street he was, they were jesting with one another, and the soap manufacturer uh, said to his friend, he said, the gospel that you preach hasn't done much good, has it? Just observe. Look, there's still a lot of wickedness in the world, and there are a lot of wicked people too. The Christian didn't really make a response to his jesting, but as they were walking down the road, they, they looked and here was a young boy that was sitting on the side of the road and he was making some mud pies. And uh, the Christian said, the believer said, I see that soap hasn't done much good in the world either, for there is much dirt and many dirty people around. Well, well uh, the friend that was the soap manager of the manufacturing plant said, oh well, soap is only useful when it's applied. And the believer said, and so it is with the gospel. <laughs> oh, we continue our, our message today on repentance. Repentance. Repentance is a change of mind that results in a change of behavior, results in a changed life. Repentance leads us to turn from going our own way and turning to going God's way. It leads us to turn from sin and turn unto God. Repentance is the forsaking of those self-destructive ways and instead accepting God's way that leads to life, that leads to righteousness. When you and I repent, my friends, we are, we're submitting our thinking, we're submitting our actions, we're submitting our reactions, we're submitting our will, we're submitting our very life, our lifestyle to Christ's Lordship. A question for you this morning. Is Jesus Lord of your life? Is Jesus truly the Lord of your life? We are reminded last, were reminded last week that repentance is a gift of God. And although God commands repentance in the scripture, repentance is a gift. In fact, when you think about a gift, a gift is not something that is forced upon someone, but it's something that is received. If it was forced upon you, it would, would not be a gift at all. God does not force anyone to repent. He simply makes the opportunity available for us to do so 
Let's take a moment this morning before we get into the meat of this and let's just remember some of the blessings of repentance for there are many. If you will follow along with me in Acts chapter 3, beginning with verse 19, the scripture reads, repent therefore and be converted, turn back that your sins may be blotted out and that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the time of restoration of all things. Man, we we see here just in this passage of Scripture, we're reminded of many blessings. One of those is this, that as we repent, repentance brings forth a new life. It brings forth a changed life life. Scripture reminds us that repentance leads to godliness. It leads leads to godly living. My friends, true repentance will lead us to also experience the love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control of our heavenly Father, but it will also bring that change in our lives that allows us to live that way also. True repentance, my friends, lifts the burden of sin. True repentance repentance relieves us, our conscience, from guilt and from shame. Many blessings. Many blessings in true repentance. Peter said that our repentance toward God in Christ would result in Christ returning from heaven for us. How many are you looking forward to that day? It's going to be a wonderful day when Jesus comes for his church. We need to understand, though, that is one of the blessings of true repentance. In Philippians chapter 3 and verse 21, again, Paul reminds us that when our Lord returns, that we will be transformed and, and, and our bodies will be made new. We will receive a glorified body. How many of you think that sounds like good news? Not only will the Lord come for his church and take us to heaven to be with him forever, but our bodies will be changed in the twinkling of an eye. Now, you and I also know that we live in this life. There are many sorrows. There are trials. There are tribulations. There are losses that we experience, crosses that we must bear, but we need to know, my friends, in that final day, all of these things will be fully rectified, fully rectified, again, as we find our reward in glory, in glory. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God for his many, many blessings. We have much to look forward to, but my friends, even Until that day, in this time between now and when Jesus comes for his church, the Lord gives us blessings that sustain us and strengthen us. In fact, what we notice here in Acts chapter 3 is we see these words about refreshing. Repentance brings the refreshing presence of the Holy Spirit. Why we live here on this earth, my friends, you and I can walk in the refreshing strength and presence, Uh, again, that, that sustaining power of God. God that allows us not to limp through life, but allows us to run this race with endurance, with faith, with peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. In Peter's first sermon in Acts chapter 2, he he ties repentance with the gift of the Holy Spirit. The scripture reads like this, repent and let every one of you be baptized in in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. My friends, there is no better refreshment that comes than that of the Holy Spirit. The Lord desires for you and I to experience that today. Just for those of you that are listening with us today, a question for you. A question for you, do you need new life? Do you need a transformed life, a changed life? Are you lacking love, joy, peace in your life? 
Are you bound um, uh, by unforgiveness towards another person? Are you bound because you have sinned and you haven't found freedom from that sin? Do you know you're going to heaven? In the world that we're living today, do you need a refreshing? Do you need an uplifting? Do you need a strengthening? My friends, the scripture calls us calls us and reminds us that repentance is the way. Repentance is the way. It was interesting when uh, I was in Anchorage, Alaska, I was, uh, had the privilege of taking a, a youth choir on tour and we, we traveled uh, around Alaska and we ministered in a lot of different places. I specifically remember being in one church one weekend and it was a Saturday evening and we were preparing for our ministry opportunity the next day. And I remember in that evening there was just such a strong sense of, of God's presence And I remember in this beautiful moment, as we had been on tour for a while, as we were, we were kind of weary, but I remember in this moment, as we waited upon the Lord, just in in a move of the Spirit, different young people began just to stand and confess different areas of struggle or sin in their lives. I remember one young lady standing and, and confessing that she was just, she was angry with her parents and, and that she had been walking in disobedience towards them. And, and there were others that were expressing different things, but it was like there was this period of repentance. And man, it was like a wave of the ocean. As the, as the students, as, as they repented, all of a sudden it was just like this wave came in and there was a refreshing as the Holy Spirit outpoured upon our lives and God renewed and he strengthened and he impassioned and he empowered. Oh, it was a beautiful, beautiful moment. My friends, there are many blessings, many blessings that come with Repentance, repentance. Repentance is essential. It's essential to the Great Commission. It's essential, my friends, in in experiencing new life and a changed life. Repentance is essential, my friends, in the preaching of the good news of Jesus Christ. Listen to the scripture. Jesus said in Luke 24 that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations. We're to be about preaching, again, repentance to the nations. And in Matthew 24, the scripture says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. Church, that's what we're supposed to be about today. We're supposed to be about preaching the good news of Jesus Christ. We are supposed to be preaching, my friends, and teaching, and we are to be living it in a way recognizing that God has commanded that all men everywhere turn to him and repent. Why? Because he wants us to know his blessing. He wants us to know his goodness. He wants us to walk in paths of righteousness, paths that lead to life, not paths that lead to death and destruction. Repentance. Repentance truly is a gift. The beautiful thing about repentance, my friends, Repentance is not restricted to any one race. It's not restricted to any one group of people, any one nation. Repentance is for all man, for every man, everywhere. And we as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are called to go into all the world and to share this good news. And my friends, as you and I go forth and we share the good news of Jesus Christ as we, as we share it, as we live it, as we minister it, my friends, as we experience world events such as what is going on today, whether it's good or whether it's bad, the Holy Spirit will bring conviction to the heart. The Holy Spirit will awaken people's need to repent, to repent. Repentance. Let's talk about that for a few moments Repentance is the fruit of godly sorrow. True repentance, genuine repentance, the fruit of godly sorrow. The apostle Paul 
wrote that godly sorrow produces repentance leading to salvation. Leading to salvation. Godly sorrow, my friends, is, is defined as contrition or regret or remorse. It's, it's the genuine repentance. Not that that comes on a whim, but that that is, that is deep-seated and, and makes a choice to leave one, to forsake one, and to follow him, to follow Christ. You could say the, the first step in repentance, my friends, is godly sorrow that leads us to a change of mind, a change of attitude that results in changed life, a changed life. My friends, it's godly sorrow is not in how many tears that we cry, but godly sorrow does involve those deep feelings, again, that is God-centered and recognizes the need for change. Change of heart, change of mind, change of life. Repentance is a choice. Genuine repentance, my friends, involves confession. Sometimes I I think that we forget about this. In John 1, verse 8, Scripture reads, If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My friends, a major key or a major part of repentance is confession. Confession means you and I being completely honest with ourselves, and completely honest with God. How many of you know the Lord knows all things? There isn't anything that escapes his attention. It's not that we're needing to confess so that we can bring information before the Lord, but we have need to confess, to admit our sin, to admit our shortcoming and our need for God, to admit that going our own way or walking down these pathways has been destructive in nature, to take responsibility for that and then to call upon God for his help and his strength and his power to not only be forgiven, but to rise above and live as he lived. We read a story in the Old Testament familiar to many of us. It's the story of David and and Bathsheba. You will remember that David committed adultery with another man's wife. And you will remember through the process of events that she becomes pregnant. And and you'll remember the story that, uh, again, he puts her husband on the front line and has the troops withdraw so that he is killed. What a, what a horrible thing that we, we read about in this story. The prophet comes and confronts David, makes him face squarely what it is that he has done. And in that moment, David recognizes his sin. He confesses his sin and he repents deeply and bitterly. Again, this this picture of godly sorrow, this picture of confession. Listen to his words. Listen to his confession. Listen to his prayer to the Lord. Have mercy upon me, O God. According to your loving kindness, According to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight. David, as as, as we look at this expression, we recognize that that David didn't hide or pretend uh, again that that this had not happened or uh, or that his sin was really not that bad. Instead, he throws himself upon the mercy of God. Godly sorrow genuine repentance, confession of the heart. My friends, 
we need to understand that true repentance is the fruit of godly sorrow. But my friends, it's also good for us to see the other side of this, that repentance is the fruit of the goodness of God. It's the fruit of God's goodness. Listen to what Paul writes to the Romans. Do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long-suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? The goodness of God leads you to repentance? Listen to what Peter writes in 2 Peter 3. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. My friends, first, it's good for us to remember, it's good for us to know that God's goodness is expressed in his patience with us. Yes, God is patient, willing that none should perish. My friends, it is his desire that all men would come to repentance. And he patiently gives every opportunity for men to do so for men to do so, that they might know and walk in the blessings of the Lord, that they might walk in his favor, that they might know life. God's goodness is also revealed, my friends, again, in the awesome plan that he has for mankind. And you say, well, what is his plan for mankind? Oh, my, let me read you this scripture. I just, I love this. Out of Romans 8, verse 14 through 17, it's a great portion for for you to mark or highlight in your Bible. The destiny of man is expressed here to you and to me, God's desire for us. Paul writes, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption, sonship, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. My friends, believe it or not, God's purpose, you were born for the purpose of becoming a child of God. Let that sink in, my friends. You were born for the purpose of becoming a child of the living God, the almighty God, the most high God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting Life. The truth is this, my friends. God, the creator of this world, desires for you, for me, for all men to be a part of his divine family. That's God's call. That's God's desire. That's God's will for your life. 1 John 3, verse 1 through 3, says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called the children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are the children of God and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Oh, my friends, we see God's goodness all about this. Repentance is a gift of God, but repentance is the fruit of God's goodness. God has a plan for your life and for mine. There was nothing that you and I could do concerning our sin that separated us from him. So God himself made a way. God himself sent his son to this earth to come and live a perfect life, to come and die on the cross of Calvary, bearing our sin and our shame. 
making a way so that you and I could not only be forgiven of our sin, but we could be set free from our sin and we could walk in newness of life. We could have peace with God. Oh, again, my friends, I just, I want to encourage you. God's desire is for you to be a part of his divine family. You remember in this portion of scripture, it talks about all who have this hope in him purify themselves as he is pure. You know, over several weeks, we have been talking about the holiness of God. We've talked about sanctification. Uh, here, we've been talking about repentance in this focus. But my friends, when we know the love of God, when we experience the love of God, when we see the beauty of who he is, as we repent and we walk with him, my friends, it will lead us to purify ourselves. It will motivate us again to turn with God, to walk with God, and to wholeheartedly repent and surrender our lives to him in every area. Repentance. Repentance. Repentance doesn't end with our initial conversion. Say it again. Repentance doesn't end with our initial conversion. Some people think repentance is a one-time act, that it's, it's only something that we do at the beginning of our relationship or our walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, there is an initial repentance, my friends, but it's important for us to understand that repentance is also a process. Repentance, true repentance, my friends, results in life change. Life change. My friends, as we walk with God, as we repent and, and give our life to him and choose to follow after Jesus, we need to understand that we will continually be looking uh, and searching. There will be introspection. Uh, we will be exposed to the word of God and to prayer and, and again to the, the Holy Spirit that would lead and guide us into all truth, which will result in repentance, growth, change that leads us to places of maturity and Christ likeness. Repentance, my friends, is more than just an occasional act when we stumble in our way. Yes, that is a part of it, and we know he's faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But repentance, my friends, repentance is a God-centered state of mind. It influences the way we live. It sharpens us to pay attention to the word of God and to the leadership of the Holy Spirit in our lives. In fact, my friends, we grow as we listen and as we respond and we obey to the nudging of the Holy Spirit. But we must also note, my friends, that if we ignore the Holy Spirit, if, if, if we ignore the word of God, if we ignore spending time in his presence and being changed by his presence, then oftentimes we become dulled and we find ourselves walking in paths that are contrary to the nature, the character, and the will of our God. You know, James writes in chapter four, verse seven and 10, and, and kind of addresses Christians who have, who have lapsed into worldliness, and he writes, submit yourselves to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. I will just say to you, my friends, God has so many blessings and so many good things he desires to pour out upon your life that he desires to do in and through your life. Repentance is our key. You remember in the, in the book of Revelation, you remember the letters to the churches. You remember that Christ admonished multiple churches again. He urged them to repent, to repent, to turn from their practices, to turn from those things that were conflicting with God's word and God's will for their life. I say again, my friends, repentance is more than a one-time act. It's a life of obedience that involves continual transformation, continual spiritual growth, a continual desire 
to do the will of God. To do the will of God. Repentance. Repentance is a gift of God. God will not force you to repent. But out of his goodness, he makes repentance possible. He gives us the opportunity. The blessings of repentance, oh, they are so numerous we couldn't name them all. But I remind you, some of those blessings are new life. Some of those blessings are a godly life, a changed life, the burden of sin being removed, the shame and the guilt being gone. Some of those blessings are knowing that Christ will return for us that he'll give us a glorified body, that we will live with him forever. And my friends, some of the other blessings are this, that as we repent, there will be times of refreshing that come along the way. Repentance will bring refreshing, the refreshing presence of the Holy Spirit. Repentance will lead to healing. Repentance leads to deliverance. It leads to joy and peace in the Holy Spirit ghost. My friends, repentance is essential. It's essential to the preaching of the good news. Repentance is for every man. True repentance involves godly sorrow. True repentance is the fruit of God's goodness. This repentance doesn't end with our initial conversion, my friends, but it leads us to turn to God, to follow him to purify ourselves, and to surrender to his lordship. Is Jesus Lord of your life? Have you been brought into his divine family? My friends, you were born for the purpose of becoming a child of God. Would you bow your heads? In this moment, there may be some of you that are here and you have not given your life to Jesus. You have not received the gift of salvation. I want you to know the price has already been paid for your sin. There is a free gift of salvation available to you if you repent of your sin today and call upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Call upon Jesus Christ to be your Lord and your Savior. You can be forgiven and you can walk in newness of life. My friends, you may be here today and, and, and your focus is you have given your life to Christ, but you, you discovered the, today in, in the midst of this message, the Holy Spirit's been speaking to you and, and you recognize that you've, you've strayed. You've been going your own way. You haven't, maybe you've been walking in obedience to God's call upon your life. Maybe there's some things, uh, some sins that are in your life and you've, and you've just kind of been passive with those things. It's not really that big of a deal. I want you to know, my friends, it is God's desire not that you be condemned, but it is God's desire that you would experience the refreshing presence of his Holy Spirit today. He wants to change you. Church, we look to ourselves, we look to our families, we look to what's happening in our nation and our world today. My friends, these are all signs that speak to us that we have need to repent. These are also signs that tell us as the church we need to awaken to our call and we need to go out with the good news of Jesus Christ and let everyone know that it is God's desire that they would become a part of his divine family. The pathway, the key, it's found in repentance. Repentance. I'm gonna lead us in a prayer this morning and if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, would you just repeat these words after me and just let this be your expression to our Heavenly Father, to Jesus, His Son, who gave His life to you. Let me lead you in bringing that invitation. Would you repeat after me? Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. 
And I thank you for your word. I thank you for your love and for your goodness that calls me, invites me to be a part of your family. I confess, God, that I have sinned, that I've gone my own way. And today, Lord, I ask for your forgiveness. I declare, oh God, that I don't want to walk that path anymore, but I want to walk your path of peace and joy and righteousness in the Holy Ghost. Jesus, come into my heart, cleanse me of my sin, and help me to walk in obedience to your word and your will for my life. I repent of my sin and I turn to you, O Lord, thanking you for Jesus' work on the cross of Calvary. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer with me today, would you would you please contact me? I'd like to get some more information to you and, and help you in your walk with the Lord. Chris at valleylifecenter.com or go to valleylife.love and would love to speak with you and pray with you. In church, I want to encourage you today to search your heart. To search your heart. My friends, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Are you recognizing today that repentance is just not in our conversion, but it's really a process of spiritual growth where we walk with him, where we obey his word and his will and the leadership of the Holy Spirit in our lives? Church, a question for you today. Do you need to repent? A second question for you today, are you going forth with the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news of Jesus Christ, and are you sharing and telling other people about God's great love and how he wants them to be a part of his divine family? Whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. Church, let's arise and share the good news of Jesus Christ. God bless you. In Holy Spirit.